our God Sing with me how great is our God Oh, see how great This morning we want to zero in and magnify your greatness. Lord, I pray that uh, for all of us in our hearts, those who are uh, joining this morning, that we would magnify who you are as a great, faithful, loving, merciful, and kind respectful, responsible God. So we entrust our hearts to you, our minds, our prayer requests for those that on our, those who are on our hearts. Just right now, those who are tuning in, just spend a moment just lifting up, just mentioning those names before the Lord now. Jesus, we mention it. Alan, Scott and Linda, Jesus, let's go ahead and mention those names, even whisper, uh, speak them out loud if you're at a place where you can just speak those names. Lord, healing physically, we pray, uh, and for and an emotional and spiritual strength uh, in the midst of uh, the trials physically in the midst of um, relational trials, in the midst of city and county trials, COVID trials, government trials, and political trials, financial trials. We fix our eyes and our hearts on you, Lord. And where our hearts are not fixed on you, Lord, we we really want to be adjusted. Align us. Align us. It's so good. Isn't it true that even as in the spirit of prayer as we're praying for our brothers and sisters, as we're lifting up our hearts, as we're thinking about um, whatever it may be that, that you're, you're praying through personally and for others, that, that uh, the Lord's so faithful. Uh, just He, he knows... I believe he just knows uh, our, our humanity, knows the uh, 
weaknesses and, and especially as we surrender them, as we speak them, as we are honest and Lord, we need you and, and I'm sinful in this area or I'm lacking in this area. And as we're in relationship that way, God is so faithful to embrace and, and he does encounter our hearts uh, with such a faithful gentle sometimes it's uh, you know it's a it's a strong convicting love but um, you're so good you're so good so I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrender all I am is yours. Sing that phrase, all I am. And all I am is yours. I give my heart, I give my heart to you. I give my life, I give my life to you, Lord I trust in you, Lord I trust in you. Oh yes Lord, we trust in you. Open our hearts as we, we look at your word, as we're reminded of some of these principles that we're learning growing to use to uh, to better observe and interpret your word thank you we're all on a journey we're all learning we all um, fall short in some way shape or form but thank you for allowing us to come together help us to be in fellowship in your word too it, it sharpens us when we're when we're able to interact with one another and question and and share testimonies and observations so um, Lord, I know this is sort of a one way, Lord, on, on Facebook, but I just pray that we would interact uh, by your Holy Spirit uh, just with these principles and that you would use them to, to change us as we, we look at Proverbs 3 today. So, Lord, we surrender our hearts to you. Uh, we trust you and we want to continue to trust you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we say... Amen. <laughs> Woo, so good. Oh, can't spend enough time uh, being before the Lord. Uh, yeah, I am uh, guilty rushing to prepare. Well, at times not rushing, but preparing, preparing a lesson. It's all good and spiritual, right? I mean, so even in the uh, the act of study, preparing, doing keynote, getting things hooked up and testing and all that. Uh, it's just so good. Sit, meditate, and uh, zero in. So I, I know I needed that. Uh, magnify how good, how great God is. And that's with those, uh, those songs in the prayer. All right, what time we got? I'm going to grab my phone here, and uh, we are at 10. So let's jump in. Uh, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 3. If you're on the, the email and you, you opened it, we're going to be in Proverbs 3. We're going to look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and, and all of us have that memorized, or we are close to it, we're familiar with, with that passage. But we're going to look at uh, again, using some of the principles that we're learning, uh, the surrounding text, and and I'll jump into uh, Proverbs and give you, give some overview. But but I want to review this uh, again. And if the Bible uh, was likened to an ocean, right? The Bible likened to an ocean. Can you imagine the Christians who just accept Jesus as Savior, but don't even get into the ocean of His Word? Yeah, I mean, it's just um, doesn't seem to work that way, right? I mean, but but we know that it's a relationship in spirit, but the word is is uh, the ocean 
of describing who he is and, and the journey to learn and explore and know God through the ocean of, of his word is certainly a lifelong journey. It's a process, right? Uh, the ABCs, A, author's intent, and we also cons have to consider that we all have uh, our approach and, and attitude that we have to be aware of our biases and perspectives, our experiences, our church backgrounds, uh, who we're, even now who we're listening to, the filters that we're using, the, the kinds of messages. So it's, it's all good to suspend, to be aware of, of that. But the author's intent is, is huge. It's a biblical author's intent. We're, we're kind of searching for that. What, what's the reason? What's the intent that, uh, that uh, this is being written? And uh, background. So B is background, historical, cultural setting. C is context, context, context. We, we don't just read verses and pull them out. Can we do that? We can. Can God use that? Yes, he does. He has. He can. But I, I just don't believe that's ideal. Of course, in light of growing uh, in, in the Lord, becoming a, a more mature uh, Christ follower. So A, B, C. And I always say uh, with this, get a, a good study Bible with good study notes. And those study notes... And if that's all we had, of course, the Bible itself with the Holy Spirit revealing to us. But in terms of study, a uh, good study Bible is, is awesome. And we've seen this. So if, if a coloring page in a picture, if that outline would represent, uh, say, the Bible pas passage and its truth, we as readers, as Christians, as, as observers of the Bible, we all use maybe different crayons, colors, right? And so the, the illustration is there, there is a central theme. There is a central truth. And we, we don't want to change that picture. But we all may color it. We all may see it. We all, again, have different perspectives and journeys and biases, etc. And so we consider that. And we give grace to one another in that way as we're dialoguing, as we're fellowshipping, as we're learning and growing. We, we may see it from a different angle. We may have a different sort of color uh, that we are, are seeing that truth or theme uh, with. So, and this is, is awesome. So when... It comes to in, interpreting, observing the Bible, interpreting. And this goes with the ABCs too. We look at what, what's the uh, intent or meaning to that audience. So what's the author's intent, but also uh, what does it mean to that, that group of people who that letter is written for? And then uh, describe, delineating uh, and, and, and exploring the differences between Okay, what's their culture, historical, background, etc.? Study Bible can help with that. And what are the differences now? Because uh, we have to consider, uh, yes, the, the themes and truths will translate, but it's not uh, word uh, or like situation for situation. There's d differences historically, culturally. And so we, we try to understand what those differences are. And then we take the principles and we cross the principle bridge to our lives, to our story. And but what's important is number four uh, there. And it's between three and four in interpreting specifically the Old Testament, we ask ourselves, does the New Testament affirm, confirm, does it qualify, does it change or modify uh, what the Old Testament is saying? So there are new commandments. Uh, so there are uh, areas of of the law, areas of, of the truth and how the Jews were to, or how the Jews were living that Jesus altered because of the new commandment, right? And, and a lot of it has to do, say, with the law. He came to fulfill the law. So we look at the, the New Testament. Does it modify, qualify, affirm? Does it change the text of, of the Old Testament? And then application, right? So it's a it looks like a simple process, but it is 
it's worth our time and it can be uh, time consuming and it and it's worth it right to invest that time to take sections of a of a passage I mean, kind of like what we're doing in, in 15 20 minutes but as we give our time to to using these principles I believe it'll grow us D.A. Carson he says we impose our ex experiences past emotions circumstances our views our paradigms to the scripture or to the text many times don't we we need to start with the author's original intent what did the passage mean to the original hearers so it's like what's the meaning to the audience right without trying to draw out application so quickly again I'm adding some of that but better interpretation and application comes from better methods so that's what we're, we're learning uh, some methods and principles and then we looked at principles of scripture that it is reflected in the text principles are timeless so they're not tied to the specific culture or situation not culturally bound they correspond to the teaching of rest of the rest of scripture so there's a continuity within the scripture and it's relevant to both the biblical and contemporary audience so the audience of the time and uh, and today as well so that that's what principles are relevant uh, to both audiences and then today what we're gonna look at so we in the red we, we've kind of highlighted uh, in the red use those principles and some of the others that, that are listed here in how to read sentences paragraphs and you know uh, stories or discourses and and we were kind of looking at the red We're we're going to keep that but you see the blue there I want to use uh, of these areas the contrasting words characters or themes so it's contrast comparison so there's contrasting themes in the in the Bible and in the story uh, in the paragraphs um, and there's also uh, comparison so there's there's sometimes I want to say the intent of 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 bib biblical authors is to draw contrasts and comparisons within uh, what they're they're writing so we're gonna look at Proverbs uh, here and I wanna let me get out of this and I'm gonna and although you may not be able to see this super clear I tried to blow it up as, as big as possible and we'll just go with it all right so this is uh, extra large print for my eyes so let's let's look at proverbs 3 5 and 6 let me make a, a quick comment so there's much to say about uh you know the disposition of, of each book and the author so proverbs largely a collection of of riddles or sayings and themes uh, from solomon and others and so it's not it's not a discourse it's not a, a story they're uh they're they they don't consist of necessarily parables but but certainly there are are sections of proverbs that uh, run together so i'm gonna just propose some thoughts in light of proverbs 3 5 and 6 and the surrounding context while uh, they can be sort of taken in chunks in, in you know like in the scriptures areas of proverbs 2 uh, can be taken as a section sometimes even one or two sort of scriptures as we note are are uh, uh, riddles right uh, as described in proverbs so but we'll look at we'll look at that so proverbs is is unlike any book so it's it's not like the psalms it's not written like the psalms nor it's written like the gospels or uh, paul's letters uh, for that matter so proverbs is unique that way but let's uh let's jump in and and we thank god for just the living uh spirit that just brings his word to life even as we're studying and looking at themes right trust in the lord just so it, it, lord thank you trust in the lord with all your heart do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths 
He will make your paths straight. He will make straight your paths. Ah. So rather than a message about trusting the Lord and uh, it's so uh, it's so good and needed uh, to to prepare uh, messages like this for the body of Christ for for us to continue to trust in His. This is such a powerful passage and uh, you know one of my favorites and and many of you uh, may. You know, say this is one of my favorites as well. This is certainly a go-to passage, Proverbs three, five, and six. Just for our study purpose today, let's look at uh, the idea. And so I'm gonna go back here. Let's look at kind of the idea of contrast and comparison. All right, contrast and comparison. There, we're gonna we're gonna look at Proverbs two. Because I, I believe while they're, they are sort of individual sections and, or riddles, but there's a theme uh, in this first section, chapters 2 into 3, that I believe we'll, we'll learn when we look at contrast and comparison. For instance, uh, keep in mind as we read through Proverbs 2, so have, have your Bibles ready there. So keep in mind as we look at sort of the surrounding area surrounding passages <clears throat> uh, keep in mind uh, about uh, our own understanding you know or wisdom in that way right our own understanding um, of acknowledging him there's some comparisons and contrasts i think we'll run into but also he will make your uh, he will make straight your paths your paths so uh, there's Maybe some contrast and com comparing uh, themes when it comes to the path of life. So let's let's kind of look at that path of life, our own understanding, wisdom. Right. Let's so let's look. I'm gonna go back in. I'm gonna start with uh, Proverbs two one. Just read through, and then I'm just make some observations. All right. And if you want to jot some down on on the comments or even ask questions uh, you know, about that. In fact, I should get my phone. So I won't, well, I won't uh, be uh, looking at this. I'll address those after, or maybe we can interact as a small group in the comment section. Proverbs 2, verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure up my commands with you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, yes, if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures, then, so it's a pivot there right verse 5 then you will understand the fear of the lord and find the knowledge of god okay so let, let's look here so there's this is instruction uh to a son you from a father if you receive my words treasure my commands you make your ears attentive to wisdom uh incline your heart to understanding yes if you call out for insight so if you call out for insight raise your voice for understanding wow so there, there's a there's ears and there's voice there's attentiveness that is a choice you receive this that intentional uh building of a relationship i see here so if you want it uh, if you seek it like silver if you search for it as for hidden treasures verse four and that pivot, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Okay, let's pause there. Now, you may have your Bibles, which is which is uh, maybe nicer. I'm going to scroll back to uh, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust, so, so think about comparison, some, some comparison thoughts and ideas or themes, or some contrasting thoughts. You see here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So there's something about heart, right there. Or oh, in in Proverbs, I'm looking at Proverbs two, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him; He will make straight your paths. 
So for me, what I want to suggest to us is there are some themes while there are sort of separate uh, individual kind of riddles and sections in Proverbs. Uh, there, there are themes of, of course, wisdom, themes of the fear of the Lord, themes of trusting, themes of the path. And so we see in, in Proverbs 2, uh, when you look at a Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. And here, it says here, so incline your heart to understanding. So it's like, wait, I don't lean on my own understanding, but I have understanding, but incline my heart to understanding. So again, that's the... I mean, for me, the observation is uh, there is an understanding that we pay attention to. And it's uh, and we raise our voice for this understanding. Uh, we, we seek it. We cry out for it. We search for it. And 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 then verse five, then you will understand. So, again, here's something I'd like to connect and compare uh, this theme or word to, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. All right, let's pause there. The fear of the Lord and the knowledge of God. We'll understand the fear of the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And so here's what I'd like to observe. That in question form, does my understanding uh, include the fear of the Lord? Does my understanding include uh, the, the, the wisdom of God? So, I mean, that's the understanding we want to uh, lean towards within us, right? And of course, he says, do not lean on your own understanding. So, your own under my own understanding, in contrast to the fear of the Lord or the or the wisdom of God, uh, I could I could describe that as, well, instead of the fear of the Lord, <laughs> right, uh, my uh, selfish, self-centered ways, instead of being reverent towards God. I, I just I just want to do things my way and and that's so my understanding is resting in in me, being self sufficient or uh, resting in my gifts. And and so when I see here in verse five, you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the wisdom or the knowledge of God. Mm, wow, okay, I can contrast the knowledge of God certainly with uh, what I don't know of God, uh, but what I think I know of how to accomplish something within a relationship or, you know, again, it's, it's trusting myself and my experiences and my journey. And, and some of you have had just, an, you know, an incredible journey. Yes, with problems, with trials, but you've, you've come out on this side by God's grace, but I think like myself, we can tend to trust and lean in on our our own sort of gifts or, or we've made it uh, through experiences. So it, it is an acknowledging of the Lord, right, to not trust in our own understanding. Let's continue on. This, so again, as we read through uh, it, this passage, you're going to see there's so many different uh connections i i see with contrast and comparing so verse six the so it's the lord who gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding so it comes from him he stores up sound wisdom for the upright he is a shield to those who walk in integrity okay check this out guarding the paths of justice watching over the way of his saints okay here's here's what i want to be think now I have to scroll, so you may have your Bibles flip over. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge Him and He will make 
straight your paths. He will make your paths straight. It's him who's going to going to guide you and help you. Right? So you see here in in two the comparison or so even you can what's the contrast to the path of the Lord and your path, you know, Rod's path. So it says so again, you can see here, uh, he stores up sound wisdom for there. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. So that there's that, uh, you know, it, it's uh, uh, walking down the path. So just uh, a connection to path, right? Guarding the paths of justice, wa watching over the way of the of the saints. And then you will, so here again, understand righteousness and justice. I want to understand God's righteousness, His justice, uh, not lean on my own understanding and my idea of what justice should be. Again, sometimes, it, you know, where our justice should be, you know, what we would do in this situation when there's an issue. I mean, and there's so much that we're hearing over the news, injustices that are happening, whether it's to families, to in the racial uh, areas of race and or and again so many areas so injustices and and so lord what's the justice of the lord uh, we want to seek so guarding the path of justice and watching over the way of his saints then you will understand righteousness verse 9 and justice and equity and every good path so you see here let me back up so you see here, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it just, it, 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 you, you start seeing the wealth of that passage through us going through just, and that's the surrounding te text above or preceding verses 5 and 6, right? You see themes of as we were contrasting, as we're comparing these themes of understanding of, of path. Uh, it's so, uh, so rich. So again, we're we're just. This is a, uh, you know, obviously a, a very quick um, lesson. But if you just spend time, just looking at the scripture that way and seeing what what the Holy Spirit speaks to you about and how He applies that uh, to to your life. Oh, so rich. And uh, verse 10, for wisdom will come into your heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Wisdom comes there. You, so you see it's like there's a huge sort of setup into even moving into Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, right? Discretion will watch over you. Understanding will guard you. Delivering you from the way of evil, the path of evil. So when you look at path, walk, uh, ways. Uh, you, I mean, you see that theme, right? And he who forsakes the paths of uprightness and to walk in the ways of darkness. So again, that's the contract. There's dark, uh, there's there's good, evil, there's dark, there's light. So you see there's different paths, of course, that we all can take. Verse 14, who rejoice in doing evil, delight in the, the perverseness of evil. Men whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. Huh. Let's, again, let's look at Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So I, I stop there and I ask myself, just observing what we have. So is my heart, so yeah, I want to trust in you, but is my heart mixed with what I'm, uh, you know what I'm filling it with uh, when it comes to uh, my heart's desire my seeking uh, you know the the fear of the Lord the wisdom of God the knowledge of God trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding see how it's like again if you just cross-reference start comparing you consider whew, it, you just just so much more life right in in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight 
your paths. Uh, so Lord, help me to, so again, I, you know, I just turn it into prayer. Lord, help me to choose paths, uh, thought paths, emotional paths that I'm, I'm, I'm choosing, that I'm uh, evaluating, assessing, I'm putting my emotions, my spirit, my thoughts before you. Am I, am I thinking down the right path? Am I feeling down the right path? I, this is this is really speaking to me. I can give you uh, real life stories. Am I real life stories that the Lord's speaking to me? Am I? So I need to consider, and I need to assess, and then adjust and align with with God's understanding. Uh, with God's ways. But you see how that just really, really pops. Uh, so we, even, we haven't even gone, so what time is it? 10, 27. Okay, give me uh, just a few more five minutes. A <laughs> uh, few more five-ish minutes. Yeah, uh, yeah we, l- let me do it right, right now. So let's take Proverbs. So look at Proverbs uh, 5 and 6. And I'm going to read, just starting from, from chapter, there's more in chapter two. I'm going to start with chapter three, verse one. And so here again, my son, he continues. So again, remember, there's no chapters and verses, verse numbers, right? Um, so for reading this, um, and again, it's not a story, but more commands, um, uh, r- riddles, um, sayings. And so it says, uh, my son, do not forget my teaching, don't, uh, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Ooh, that'll preach. Let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and man. There's, there's certainly a, 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 a consistent thread uh, through, through this proverb. So while, again, it's not sort of story form, but, but there's a continuity, a connection uh, and of, of truths within uh, what uh, he's he's writing, even from Proverbs two, as if you will. So you see here, we get to Proverbs five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your path straight. Uh, so again, we we I don't think we I think we need to consider. Proverbs 3, 1 through 4. Pro- aspects, themes of Proverbs 2, when we're really encouraging someone to trust in the Lord with all your heart. So I can say, hey, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Just just give Him your heart. Now, for the growing, mature Christian, when we connect themes of, and again, when we're just encouraging someone at church, and that's why it can be so fast. Yeah, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on what you think. But now if we're able to add, hey, try reading Proverbs 2. And and look at the beginning of Proverbs 3 and and see how that sets up Proverbs, like trusting in, in the Lord. Because, yeah, God wants us to trust Him with all of our hearts. But what what of the heart is God speaking through Proverbs 2 and and Proverbs 3, 1 through 4, and even thereafter. So you see in its, uh, in its context, the Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 for me, and I trust for you after this, this study, you, you just pick up themes and ideas of comparison, contrast, um, and, and connecting you know, the repetition of, of these certain themes. It just enhances Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 uh, for me, even just this last 20 minutes for me. So it's so rich. Uh, and we didn't even go uh, 
after let me just quickly wrap up with this couple of minutes trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your path so be not wise in your own eyes fear the lord see that from proverbs 2 fear the lord and turn away from evil that affects our path right so so you you just see you see even that proverbs uh 3 7 and 8 are huge uh, for me connects to uh, you know the uh, the command and exhortation of, of five and six trust in the lord with all your heart do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths uh, how does that have, well okay don't be wise in your own eyes ron it's okay is your is your heart reverencing the lord through this that i need to trust you through this circumstance or through in this relationship or i need to trust you but is there a, a fear of the lord that we're we're developing in our hearts so again you see how all that connects together so rich isn't it Whew, so good i'm gonna uh, stop there and if you have any questions thoughts just let me know. You can contact myself, of course, text, call, email. And uh, I just trust that, that this time is just good and refreshing and and rewarding for, for you. So thanks for tuning in. And I'm going to pray. By the way, uh, before I pray, uh, those of you uh, who are part of the uh, leaders, uh, servants, uh, email list we've been meeting wednesdays we're going to continue to meet wednesday evening at at our home and continue to have these zoom updates and so i sent out an email so we are rescheduling our uh, reopen date at at midpack uh, so i want to i'll give you we'll give you more information about the whys behind it but we're looking at uh, mid to late september we'll see how things go just in light of uh, just things that we, the council, uh, discussed and prayed about and, and came up with. So it's good. We're trusting in the Lord with all of our hearts and, and doing our best not to lean on our own understanding in all our ways, trying to acknowledge Him, and we're trusting Him to direct our, our paths. And uh, So yeah, more information. But if you'd like the Zoom link for that, you're not on the email list, just get a hold of me and, and we can include you in that too so i am i'm i'm sincerely excited about uh you know what the lord w wants to do i don't know all that or what he wants but i just have a a spiritual uh, expectation and in god's god's good we're trusting in the providence and faithfulness of the lord so yeah father thank you so much this is an appropriate word uh, for me, it, it applies, Lord, for me as a pastor, as a leader, as a shepherd, and 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 not even just in light of New Hope Manoa and the church and all that's going on, but, but just in life. So thank you, God. Help, help all of us, uh, brothers, sisters tuning in now, those who may see this later on. Lord, but we we pray that you would help us, enable us, empower us, strengthen us uh, to to know you and to incline our hearts to the fear of the Lord and the wisdom and the knowledge of God, to seek understanding uh, according to uh, you and your ways and your character and your word. Uh, in the midst of such just challenging uh, times, And Lord, uh, help us, help us all as the... Uh, as believers and as the body of Christ to unite together uh, in love and with your grace and and pursuing your truth so we thank you thank you for this time in Jesus name amen amen love you guys aloha <laughs>